Welcome to the Shooter Ready Challenge with Laser X, where each month we invite anyone to join us in a dry fire practice session focusing on a short list of skills. None of us get as much practice as we would like, and even when we take the time to practice, we don't always get a very high ROI out of the time we invest. We bring you the Shooter Ready Challenge so you can focus your time on the few and simple things that will drive dramatic results in your shooting skills. You do not need any specific tool or product to follow along and perform dry fire practice. While we will be primarily running this practice session using a CERT pistol and Laser X app software, neither are required to follow along and improve your own shooting skills. We will show you how you can adapt this month's drill to a number of different tools to ensure you know how you can participate. We use Laser X to demonstrate these challenges because it is the best tool like it and we feel it is the best way to get both visual feedback and shot times in dry fire. Hey guys, thanks for watching this month's drill. This Shooter Ready Challenge this month, we are gonna be doing a six plate rack challenge. This is actually a new challenge module that's been added to Laser X. Uh, maybe not all of you are going to be able to participate in this one, but I still want you to follow along and go through this drill. Even if you use Laser X and set up manually six different targets, still want you to go ahead and work on this drill with us this month. Now this month we're going to be featuring quite a bit more the Next Level Training CERT pistol. CERT stands for Shot Indicating Resetting Trigger. This is the Glock model, which is referred to as the Model 110 RR. This is a red, red laser. I don't use any of the fancy models. There's more upgraded ones you can get. I just work with the basic ones, uh, and, and they work fine for you as well. Uh, but if you want the fancier stuff, including ones with green lasers, that's always an option. And they're also available now in the Glocks, as well as the Smith & Wesson m and line, as well as a newly released SIG P320. They have both a compact compact size, or at least the short, shorter barrel size, as well as the full size models of the 320 series. Pretty cool stuff. Now, obviously he's a bit more expensive as far as a training tool goes. Uh, I highly recommend the CERT pistols. You know, get one that uh, works for you, that maybe fits or, or matches your everyday carry or range gun or whatever it is. Even if you don't have a Glock, I've used the Glock model for years, and it actually was part of my transition over to carrying Glocks. And I found a lot of benefit from shooting a Glock-shaped CERT pistol, even when I didn't really use or carry Glocks that often. Now, one of the reasons we're using the CERT pistol quite a bit more is because with the six plate rack challenge that we've got here, we have six targets, six shots that we're gonna need to fire. So it's kind of necessary to have a resetting trigger. If you don't wanna purchase a CERT pistol, you can also use a double action gun of some kind. You've seen me use in past Shooter Ready Challenge videos my SIG SP2022 with a laser cartridge in it, and it's a double action trigger each time, but it works, and it's a relatively low cost entry option. Uh, obviously, one challenge would be if you had a striker fired gun, like my favorite P365XL here, uh, with a laser cartridge, this isn't gonna work quite so well because we'd have to reset that striker every time. But if this is all you have, even if you're not able to use Laser X, and that's another thing, if you don't have access to Laser X, you don't have a computer that'll run it very well or a tablet or a phone or whatever, Still, I would encourage you to work on the Shoot Ready Challenge drills with us each and every month, even if it just means taking your normal pistol, safely unloaded, of course, and you just go through the motions of working the trigger and doing the same things like we're doing right here in the challenge. So, let's talk about this month's challenge. Of course, the six plate racks, we've actually been working up to this point in some degree. Uh, you'll note that we've done some other challenges in months past where we had multiple targets. That means transitions come into play. Transitions are gonna be really key on shooting the plate rack. Now I'm using a simple target. You see there it's uh, readily printable. Uh, this is actually a modified version. They have, a, they have one that you can download and print free right from within the LaserX software. Uh, 
I had some problems with getting that dialed in and calibrated for my lighting, so I've created another version, and I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this uploaded to our site, concealedcarry.com forward slash print targets. So, uh, or actually, you know what, even better, maybe we'll have this one right on this drills page, on this month's challenge page. That'd be probably be even a better way to go. So, this month's challenge, of course, the six plate rack. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start launching uh, this challenge from within the software. Six targets, that's five transitions plus the initial draw. So we're gonna go through the same steps, the same process like we have with the other challenges. That means first shooting the challenge in a more accuracy focused mode. So we're gonna take our time a little bit. We're gonna make good trigger presses. We're gonna see a good sight picture on those targets. And then we're gonna make a good transition over to the next target and do the same thing, repeat the process. Then we'll move into the speed oriented part of the challenge where accuracy isn't really weighted so much but the speed really is. And so we'll push that speed, we'll focus on building up our speed. So that's where you know that transition speed is gonna be really critical. Go back to some of the previous shooter rate challenge drills we've done, including like with the three amigos, uh, that sort of thing where we talked a little bit about transitions and the need to drive the gun with the body from the hips and really pivot and move quickly from target to target because we really wanna make sure we minimize those transition times between shots, between targets, because that's one place where there's a lot of opportunity to lose a lot of time or gain a lot of time. All right, so I've got a setup here with LaserX software, of course running on my iPad, and uh, this will work though with your laptop, with a webcam, with your iPhone, an Android, whatever, any internet connected device. Uh, if you're not already signed up for LaserX, definitely consider going and doing it. I highly recommend it. But we've got our plate rack challenge loaded in there with our six targets, as well as a miss zone around that. And so I'll go ahead and hit, oops, missed the button there, we'll hit done. And so now, of course, locking targets, it'll calibrate all of that. So we'll go ahead and again, we're gonna go through the accuracy portion of the challenge first. So we'll really focus on nailing the draw, nice, good, clean fundamentals. Uh, present out to the target, pick up the sight, see a good sight picture, press the trigger. So let's go ahead and just run through the accuracy standard here uh, a couple of times. Go. Drill complete. All right. Score to 198. It's not a bad score. It's actually a pretty good score. Um, I'll have, I've had a couple more that were higher, so it definitely can be a little more accurate. Now let's take one more stab at it and just see where we end up. Ready. Okay, so I scored a couple points higher. Still not a terrible run. Now, one thing I wanna encourage you to do, even when you're working on the accuracy portion of the drill, even if you're taking your time with those shots, making as clean a sight picture, trigger press, all that that you can, between those shots, between those targets, I wanna encourage you to already getting into the idea of making a fast transition from target to target. Hopefully you saw that a little bit here when I was demonstrating it. So you can take all day long making that perfect shot, but once that shot is sent, then it's time to go and get to that next target. Go. Complete. All right, so that's the accuracy portion of the plate rack challenge. So let's go ahead and let's go get set up with the speed version of this test. This is gonna really push us um, and it's gonna be tempting to go too fast. And I wanna caution you against something. And what that is, is it's really easy when you have these six targets. A lot of times we'll do pretty good on that first one We'll carry that through and do pretty well on the second, maybe even the third plate. But a lot of times there's a tendency for us as shooters to start falling apart a little bit. Uh, as we get comfortable and we may start to focus a little less or not see our sights quite as well uh, and kind of rely a little bit more on feel. 
And while that might work in some contexts, I wanna encourage you to see site picture, shot, transition, site picture, shot, transition. So we're seeing a site picture every time. If we see those sites on target, we cannot miss unless we really mess up that trigger. But we're not gonna do that because we've been practicing lots, right? All right, so let's go ahead and get this set up and it's gonna go ahead and calibrate. So again, hopefully you practiced in the accuracy portion of the challenge. You, you know, again, you could take as much time as you wanted with the shots, making as accurate a shot as possible, but hopefully you began setting the, that, that, that precedent of taking the shot and moving quickly to the next target. That's, now that's gonna really come into play and we're gonna be taking fast shots meaning that we're not probably prepping the trigger so much, but we're really more or less pressing through the trigger. So still requires good trigger mechanics, good trigger control, but we're pressing through that and going quickly, but also combining that with our fast transitions. So we see right now my top score is a 239, and we'll just, we'll see where we end up. Here we go. Ready. Speed challenge. Complete. All right, 221. Uh, so a little bit slower than some of my other runs that I've made, but I made decently clean shots. My first shot was a little bit high. I noticed that. Uh, I realized I was pushing that probably a little faster than I should have. I actually don't think I had the best grip on the gun, but then after that, it was a little, you know, actually pretty accurate shots considering how fast I was going. But again, the goal there was for me to see a sight picture on each target. Uh, that might feel like sometimes you're taking too much time, but the reality is is Missing is slower than actually just hitting the target So and this will actually penalize you if you have any misses at all It's actually going to give you a zero score zero point score for this particular challenge even though we're encouraging you to go fast It's okay to to not be quite as accurate, but you need to be as accurate as large You know as, as that plate is large if we go outside that then it's going to give us zero points Let's take another stab at it. Ready. <clears throat> Go. Drill complete. 232, so a little bit better. Uh, pushing the speed, probably a little bit more that time. Uh, yeah, cool. So I'm feeling pretty happy with that. Now, one thing that you'll probably see a little bit is that you may see a little bit of a streaking of the laser on the target. Uh, I want to caution you about a couple of things here. Now, there, there's, there's likely going to be some streaking, especially when you're using a cert pistol, because the idea is that we start moving as soon as we take that shot. As soon as we know we have that shot, we have our sights on target, we take that shot, we want to instantly start moving. The goal with a live fire gun is to be doing that transition even during the time that the gun is cycling. So honestly, if you're doing this correctly, you're going to see a bit of a streak as that laser is, you know, the laser is still on for a brief moment as you're beginning that transition. Uh, you may even see a little bit of it as you're coming into the target, but that's really the caution I want to give to you is that it's really easy and probably tempting to just swing across these targets and it would kind of look like this. Bang, 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 bang. And you're, and you're just swinging smoothly as opposed to taking transitions. There's a difference between that. These are not very big transitions, but they are still transitions. Uh, now, while a person can learn to get good at timing their shots with a sweep with the gun like that, uh, I would say that's not as ideal a skill to have in this kind of context. We're, I mean, I, I like to think in terms of I have a target here and I have a target there. The risk is too great, especially in a real world context, in a self-defense context. And I'm definitely, even though I love competition, I'm more of a defensive focused shooter. The risk is too great that if I begin shooting a target here and sweeping across and trying to tie my shot and hit this target here, there's a chance I, I let that shot go too early or too late and maybe swing past and I'm sending errant rounds past a, a potential threat and we're accountable for every round we fire. So in a competition sense, that sweep and getting some timing to it and making that all come together, 
might be a valuable skill, but I would say ideally only in that competition realm. So, and I still think for most shooters, it's a better skill to have and that they'll perform better you know, on a long-term picture of things, uh, whether it's competition or defensive shooting, to focus on transition, 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 transition. Go! All right, let's go ahead and set up the final version of the challenge. Of course, you know, every month we do this, uh, at least that this has been the norm. We, we go accuracy, speed, and then we bring it together in a balanced format. So let's go ahead and get that one set up. Now here, obviously, we're looking for, there's that, that, that uh, scale of sorts or that seesaw, and we want to see that things are kind of balanced. So the balance is a good thing. We're seeing a good, we're seeing good enough accuracy and also measured well with speed. Because if we start pushing the speed too fast, then accuracy starts to suffer and vice versa. So that's, it's a really brilliant algorithm built into LaserX to encourage you to find that sweet spot. And that's one of the, I think this is actually one of the most valuable aspects of working with the LaserX software in your dry fire training. All right, let's get this set up and calibrated so we can run the final challenge here. All right, <clears throat> we're back. We've got this ready to roll. And so let's see how we do on the balanced approach of this challenge drill. Ready. Go. Drill complete. Okay. So, uh, you know, I, I took a little bit more time on some of my shots. My transitions were still pretty fast. You'll actually see though that it's leaning a little bit towards accuracy on that scale or that seesaw. Uh, so I could probably actually push the speed a little bit more. Uh, and that's where this is kind of fun to try to find that balance. It, it really is, I think, a pretty good measure of, of where you're at with finding and striking your own personal balance. Right. Not everybody's gonna be the same speed or as accurate, but there's gonna be a place where complete so I was not quite as good there I was a little bit distracted obviously talking to the camera um, and his name is John <laughs> all right <laughs> well we actually see a couple of shots were, were really borderline uh, the seesaw is a little bit more balanced though all right let's take maybe take one more stab at it where I'm not quite as distracted and see how we do this time ready Oh, interesting. So my shots, my hits were not nearly as good, uh, but they all hit. And we see we're actually pretty balanced, but it did score me a little bit lower than some of my other runs. Uh, so it looks like I may have pushed the speed a little bit too far. I think it was expecting me to be a little bit more accurate. And that's okay. Keep playing with it and, and finding that sweet spot for you. Ultimately, in a challenge like this, a hit is a hit. Uh, I'm not going to beat myself up too bad if I'm a little bit on the edge. It, it's, a, it's a good reminder that I'm maybe pushing things to a point where I might start really breaking down. Because uh, a miss is definitely a miss. But a hit is a hit. So we, we just want to find that, that sweet spot for us. Go! Drill complete. We conducted the challenge this month via the LaserX app. LaserX is a must-have for any serious shooter. Think about the hundreds of dollars you could spend each month going to the range and putting ammo into the backstop. LaserX can give you an unlimited number of shots without the cost of ammo and all within the comfort of your own home. You can try it out for only $9. To learn more, visit LASRAP.